What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Uh, so, uh, again, this is actually going to be on Don Fron Trading. I've been trying to make a video about this for the past few days. Uh, I don't have time to record and upload, so we're going to one-shot this thing. We're just going to go live here on Don Fron Show. Uh, now, I have done a video before where I talked about something Charlie said, and then you watched it. So if you're watching this one, maybe we just ignore the thumbnail. I know the professional YouTubers, they do a much better job than I do. Uh, and it's all, it's all choreographed. It's very well done. Uh, anyway... Charlie's actually the one that got me onto this trade, and I specific, the only reason my mentorship knows about this, and I didn't talk about this on YouTube, was, so Charlie does pump and dumps. Uh, maybe calls it something different. Anyway, not my style, which uh, in the YouTube world, there's a lot of like, uh, if you don't do it my, it's like my way or the highway. If you don't do it my way, that other YouTuber's wrong, and, and, and that's really false. You know, there, there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. Uh, in the stock market world, there's many more ways to do it wrong and just get blown out and you lose a bunch of money. Uh, but if there was someone talking about pump and dumps, uh, you know, it would be Charlie that I, that I watch. Uh, in, in fact, I don't listen to the radio. I just listen to other YouTubers. It's how I'll end up coming across the Meet Kevin video because it'll just start off. I usually make it to where one of his ads and then I just click next. Uh, but, I, but I will listen to Charlie. It's just because stock stuff. Uh, but he was talking about this one morning. Uh, and I forget he had a bunch of just good things to say about this. Uh, now, I don't, it's not my bread and butter. I don't really do these a lot, but when the setup is there, I do. I've seen plenty of his videos. This is probably one of the first ones I've taken that he said, and I was like, that sounds good. That, that setup is there. Short interest was ridiculous. Uh, uh, there was something maybe the CEO said. Now, the reason I'm not going to go into all these details is because it'd be, you'd be much better off just going to Charlie's channel. Uh, so Zip Trader uh, is where it's at. Now, he'll put together a lot clearly. I'll just butcher it. Uh, but there's something along the lines of, we're not going to dilute this thing. Like, we know what it's... We, uh, basically, the CEO, and, and to sum it up, says, we know what's about to happen. We're not going to dilute. And I was like, that almost that was almost a green flag for everybody. Like, let's just pile in this thing. Short interest was... Uh, I, as far as the uh, the float, uh, the share float out there, it was over 100% short. Uh, so, all signs were, if we tick this thing high enough... We're going to go for it. And so I actually got in at 36 cents. And the reason, one of the reasons I got in was because there's a couple people in my group that do play these. And I, I was going to be cocky. I just wanted to trade it better than they did. I was like, okay, I know they watch Charlie, so I'm going to hammer this thing. So just to be cocky, I was going to do it better than them, <laughs> even though it's not what I do all the time. Turns out they're not even this. So I'm in a competition with nobody. I am of over 100% on my shares. Uh, so, you know, that's awesome. I didn't go in a crazy amount. I got it. It was pre-market, so it gapped up right here. That's when I saw Charlie's video, so I just bought it pre-market at $0.36. Cents. Just kind of let it ride. Uh, and right now, it's shown nothing. When it comes to momentum, all these red candles, nothing about these are spooky. When you look at the whole chart, yes, uh, it looks like it's going to do everything it's done before. You know, like, why would this time be different? I know that's a saying right now going around a lot that this time is different. Uh, and that's how you'll get blown out holding something like this what's the ticker can't oh uh, hang on a second uh when i do the homework assignment from mentorship group i screenshot so i take the ticker off and everything so they can't just look up news uh so that's why i took this off so if that happens just let me know i'll, I'll put it back on there we go so tickers t-r-k-a um uh, troika media group uh, so i got in it just for the short squeeze and, and as far as short goes <laughs> next don is buying ape no, it's ridiculous. Uh, shorts, shorts finally covered today. So this is where things are about to get spicy. It's why I almost hesitated to make this video now because it might just be too late. Now it's getting the attention. Like This is where people will get in trouble because they'll think, now is a good time. Now this is a prime time for me. I'm set up. Like I have my stop. I put my stop loss in today at 71 cents. It might just tag out tomorrow uh, depending on the volatility. It's not good to cancel. I'll have to put it back in. So if it gaps down, I'll have to manage that. Uh, Charlie's price point was $1.27. Kind of everything he said just lined up. It, it did seem all realistic. I think he was probably he was probably grabbing, where's this resistance? Right up here. Probably more of a resistance. That will be a tough spot. I know a lot of people are going to watch the dollar mark psychological level. Uh, so if you're interested in selling at a dollar, honestly, I would make a few less pennies and my order would fill at 95 you know, like I, I, people love to trade stuff like this because it's it's cheap, so they can just buy a billion shares and feel like a market maker. Uh, and, and I get you want to take every last penny, but what if it tags the one dollar mark, and orders start to fill because everybody's got their sell order there. Shorts get right back in. It's a nice level to get back in, 
and then your order doesn't fill. It's going to fill some orders. Does not have to fill all of them? No. And if you just weren't there on that list, it doesn't get filled. You're going to watch it come right back down. Uh, and then you're going to hope it's one of these red candles and not one of these red candles and you lose all your position. So I am a big fan of don't let a green trade go red. And this honestly is where I do suck at these because I got in, I'm riding the wave. When I tag out, I'm going to be done. Like that, that's that. The thing will go to ten dollars. It'll so let's say it pumps up to a dollar. I sell mine at ninety cents because it wicks down, stops me out, runs to ten dollars. There's it's not likely that I got back in something like that. Uh, a little powwow to pump it more. <laughs> that's the whole market. Uh, these are definitely like playing a game of hot potato. So I kind of want to just go over that. Just this specific trade got thirty cents, thirty six cents, and all we're doing is just kind of rocking this thing up. Uh, zones probably not something you'd really want to pay attention to on this like zones for me work great on they're the same stuff I trade every day Nvidia Tesla Microsoft Facebook the S&P the the Nasdaq the Russell everything with a lot of volume very consistent it's easy to tell where those buyers and sellers are the buyers and sellers in here are actually more sellers than buyers and they're starting to get out so when shorts cover it is buy side activity which is what's causing this momentum up the thing is with these, what makes them dangerous is because if you're short this ticker, maybe the company does suck. It makes sense. There's a reason it's it's priced at 1.36 cents when I got in. There's a reason it's priced that way, and Amazon was $3,500. Like there's 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 really no comparison. Uh, so when when you're taking this position as a short, uh, I probably am giving this thing plenty of wood because we've seen pump pump and dumps. And imagine going short this company and getting scared because of a little spike like this. If that wasn't in your analysis, then what are you doing? Like probably not in this very long probably not a, a, a good person you're probably not a good shorter if that makes sense uh but it looks like as of today we might be reaching that that threshold at that, that thresh point the uh, the puke point the point where they say all right i'm gonna get out and get back in momentum has taken its grip it's time to rock and roll for the bulls let me get out now most people that they're just not emotional they can say this hey it didn't pan out we're gonna stop out and they will get back in later they're gonna let this thing run its course the fact that some shorts got out today is where things get spicy because right now is did they get out run this thing up so if they got out at the 60 cent mark and it's up here maybe that's their entry to get back in did only a few need to get out or was that just what lit the fuse too many more because if that's the case then it is going to the dollar mark but if, if the bunch of shorts just come piling that they, they stopped out at 61 cents drew just drove this thing up now they're thinking that's a pretty decent level we've sold here before this is where we first entered our position you know let's go they went short somewhere up here yeah they might have stopped out at 60 cents they still made that profit now they're going to get back in if they took that same trade then it, the trade makes sense so i, I kind of would watch this area again take these zones with a grain of salt i probably would watch you're going to watch some support resistance levels on this which is kind of silly uh but this is to be the area where i'm going to start tightening things up which is why i've uh, now I saw this on my phone, so that's why I'm just now putting zones in here. Uh, but that's why I'm putting my stop. Now if this breaks up, I'll leave my stop there. Uh, if it starts to get up here, once we get into this zone, I will put my stop below. Get to the chop. <laughs> uh, and Molin? No, uh, not. Uh, I, I think I did trade Molin in the beginning, but not not now at the, these prices. I don't really. Uh, again, I really don't don't care for these. Uh, but this thing is rocking and rolling. And right now, I want to say, if you guys were to, to jump in and grab this, right now, you're playing a game. Imagine walking in halfway through a game of hot potato. <laughs> you're about to jump in and say, these hands are ready. And you and you could just catch the bad luck. So my question to everybody that is getting this, because I'm starting to see more, maybe it's just because the algorithms bring me stuff. I'm seeing more thumbnails about this. When something moves, it does get things going a little bit further. Uh, have your exit plan before you ever click the buy button. I'm fully aware of what my risk was buying at 36 cents. They could have delisted this company. I would have been just fine. I'm like, ah, sucks. I would have tweeted. I would have tweeted Charlie. I'd have been like, hey, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that non-financial advice. Now I'm broke and I'm homeless. Just kidding. I really, I mean, even hesitant to zone these out. Uh, that being said, let's say I were to buy it right now because you're gonna roll the dice. You think momentum's coming in hot. You got a case. Uh, honestly, I, I would get in. I would find a stop. For me, I, I'm kind of looking at this little area right here. Because right here, uh, imagine stopping out it, and then this happens. You know, like it drops down maybe 
and then turns right back around what if that's what runs what if it bases out stopping out is an art and your fill on this is going to be crap you're going to put your stop market there uh and then that stop market not stop limit uh i i don't care if anyone wants to fight me on that uh, there's a reason why I've probably been doing this a lot longer. When you want to stop out, that's get out of the position. I don't like this anymore. I need to get out. Give it to the nearest nerd at the bid. Sorry I didn't have time to wrap it and put a bow on it. It's all yours. Good luck. I'm out. You know, if you go around and say, like, oh, I'm going to put my stop at uh, 71 cents, but I only want to sell it for 71 cents, yeah, that thing's going to trigger. It's just going to laugh at you when this thing turns into a pump and dump, gaps down, sells off, and all of a sudden is down here at 26 cents. And you're like, well, I only want to sell it for 71 cents. What? Let's say your stop's at 71 cents, like mine. And, and uh, you get a crappy fill. Fills at 69 cents, 68 cents. It's a big jump on a, on a penny stock like this. That would be a dream compared to what you'd be in with your stop limit that just skips right past and you're right down here at 26 cents. You're like, oh, man, one more pump and dump. I would gladly give it up for that. Alex is in TRK, so he's in my membership group, and I, I couldn't even. We were having this conversation today, and the reason why I stopped talking to you today, or just quit replying, is because he's gotten in and kind of day traded, pumps up, so he locks in. And he goes, I, just, I, I have a hard time not selling this. My shares are up twenty five percent, and he's had so far every one of them turned out great. I'm at a hundred percent, just buying it once, kicking my feet up on my desk. Uh, but I gotta be honest at any point in time had this thing not panned out had it just did not have that juice what it could have done is gap down and sold off the next day and he locked in his profits I watched my green trade just turn that thing around and just Christmas theme this thing up green and red what if it gaps down to 26 we'll get filled for a loss yeah are you afraid to take a loss if you're worried about taking a loss this probably just isn't uh, a thing for you in, in general uh, and and I, I, man, I say this a lot, and I don't, I'm not kidding when I say this. Uh, if you're telling me you're not going to take a loss, like you're going to bag hold and sell when it becomes green, that's really what you're doing when you don't have a stop loss. You're telling me I'm only going to sell when it's green. Your plan was I'm going to buy and I'll sell later for a profit. If it's a loss, I'm just going to hold it. You're telling me you were going to be the one trader in the world, because it hasn't happened yet, that will literally never take a loss, ever. Because that's what you're telling me. You're never going to take a loss period yeah i could gap down and get delisted things happen crap happens it's a, that's why we that's why we have risk management in the first place you can only lose your whole ass if you put it out there on the line in the first place that's why you should have here's my entry here's my stop like i really hope it stops right here yeah but things could get weird and it gaps down that should all be factored in before you ever click the buy button if i'm gonna click the buy button right now my stop would be right here at 54 cents probably so that's 20 cents per share okay uh what if, so if I only want to lose two bucks, I'd only buy ten shares. That's it. So take your entry, which you're gonna just you're gung ho right now. You're going for it. So you're gonna buy. Here's your realistic stop stop loss. You're gonna your ideal. You're gonna get out here, uh, and you're thinking I'm that's twenty cents per share. How much would you risk? This is a poker table blackjack right now. How many chips would you put down there, right? And you're fine with it, just getting swiped away. Maybe they double your money. Maybe they just give you an extra chip. You're you're fine with that. You're good with that. Too little, you don't care. Too much. It's just causing anxiety. Uh, so have your realistic where you want to get out, uh, and then how much you're going to put in there, and adjust your shares accordingly. Because right now, let, let's say your stop loss is going to be 54 cents. I could, I'll risk the same amount buying here at 76, 74 cents, or at 64 cents. I'll have more shares on the 64 cents, but my stop stays the same. I'd essentially double my share count if I bought it at a lower price, and it'd be cool if we could. The dangerous thing about all wait for the dip on these things is that dip is could be one of these dips the dip that keeps on dipping once this train turns once that music stops and everybody's running for a chair it's probably not a time to get in which is why i don't really like these that much uh at least my my history with it i haven't been that consistent with these so i cherry pick these uh and i win they're fun it kind of breaks up the monotony but I am curious right now. This is something I've been talking about with my membership group. Again, this is a video I wanted to uh, to put out, you know, days ago when I got in. Uh, momentum trading is hard. It's definitely a 100% different style. Yeah, if you look at things I trade, volume's not an issue. Like things are fine. Like if you told me you're gonna bag hold the S&P <laughs> until it's green, 
I probably couldn't argue with you. If you're trading SPY shares and you're like, I don't have a stop loss, like, all right, your worst case scenario probably is a Rona crash. You, you lose 50% and you got to hold on to it for a couple of years. Like, all right, would be tough. You play that game with something like this, you just lose your account. It doesn't come back. Why is Zip Trader on the thumbnail? He's the one that got me into this trade. So I want to shout him out because he'll do a much better job explaining this. I'm sure he's got a couple other videos uh, coming out about this. Uh, but I definitely did want to shout him out on that just because it was a so far a fun trade to be in. So Mike, you're saying you want to risk 200 bucks maybe? Then take that divided by 20 cents. How many shares can you buy? And right there, you got a $200 trade. Uh, it pumps up, you put your stop in the green, call it a day. Uh, on momentum like this, these wicks down are probably going to chop you out. Like That's why I'm not the probably the best advisor on this. But if you keep it tight, one of these comes down and tags you, it's going to run. I already know what your comments are going to be in the Discord chat is, man, it tagged me out and ran. And, and that kind of looking back at a particular ticker can be so toxic and just ruin trades in the future because what you'll do next is you'll never have a stop loss again and it won't tag. It won't, ha it won't have like a wick down and shoot up. It'll just go straight down. Um, so that being said, shout out to the uh, everyone here with the notification bell turned on. I didn't tag everybody. I didn't want to didn't want to just you know alert everybody I was going live. Uh, just so they can come in here and watch me talk about a, a pump and dump. Uh, but shout out to Charlie. Thanks for getting me uh, in this. I'm glad I got to compete with no one on this. I'm fine with that tag and run because it goes down way more than up. Yeah, yeah. On these uh, again, uh, from my point of view. <laughs> I'm not Ross. I'm, I'm sure they're not Charlie from Zip Trader. Uh, these are not my cup of tea. But when they turn, I have the hardest time gauging where those buyers are going to step back in or if it's a free-for-all and the shorts come back in and just hammer this thing into the dirt. Uh, so remember this company, It's uh, after this, it, I'm up 100%. After 100%, we haven't hit a dollar mark yet. Uh, it's priced that way for a reason. Right? We're not exactly talking about Tesla right now. Uh, there were, no one's arguing this is going to be an awesome company and going to change the world. Uh, so be careful with that because bag holding, just not going to pan out. The last time I traded something like this and it jumped up 100%, it was actually a call out in my group. Is it still there? Uh, it was right. It got deleted. Was that one? No. It did. It was this... I want to say it was this pumping up right here. Made 100%. We stopped out. Imagine bag holding that. Or was it? Never mind. Hang on. Up here. There, that. They look. They all look the same. So when you see these lingering around on my charts, these are trades that we've actually taken in the group. Uh, bought this. Stop losses right here, and then it went for it. So this is me just trailing it. And I stopped out right there. I didn't get back in. Nothing. Locked in 100%. Called day. Haven't looked back. Oddly enough, the person that uh, gave this idea, so he gave the idea and then I broke it down as to how I would trade it. I said, I'll take it with you right now. We'll, we'll go for it. The person who did that is actually still bag holding this. Now there's all kinds of cool reasons. Uh, I don't know what they are. <laughs> They're going to sell um, Bye Bye Baby, something like that. You know, all the cool stuff. You get stuck in that trap. Every one of these was an opportunity to sell for less red. And that's your best case scenario. Look at this little guy. He jumped up. Best case scenario was to get out a little bit less red. That's it. Versus you have your fun. They pile in. And you get out. You enjoy it. You move on to the next one. I'm not in it, but sure fun to watch it. <laughs> I'm not going well. I'm, I'm slipping. Not loading up on Tesla at these prices. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop off here with this. One. I do have to get to my membership group. Um, if you are curious about that, that is uh, the, the Patreon links. That, that's tier two. Tier one does get you. Uh, we didn't take a, a, any any bias today. This is wrong because I haven't taken a single loss yet. I have magic money in the account, but this is the stuff I trade. We couldn't. So it was one hundred fifty dollars. I couldn't even afford Tesla, so I had to buy TSLL for one day. Um, Anyway, we have 100 shares of Ford. It paid an $80 dividend, and it didn't actually count that as profit. So uh, I got $80 magic money in the, the account. Uh, so if you're curious about that style, that's the, that's the $5 Patreon. I'm posting everything I buy and sell in there. Again, we started January 1 with zero, putting $150 in there a week. Uh, and this week, we're finally above 
We got margin. We're above 2,000. So we're rocking and rolling. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, again, check out Zip Trader. If you're into stuff like this, uh, he definitely does great videos. So anyway, uh, mentorship, we're going live right now. Everyone else, you'll see me tomorrow. Have a good one.